Assalamu alaikum my dear brothers and sisters and hello all those who are watching this video. My name is Dr. Feroz Mubarak. The reason I'm making this video is because of these growing concerns about the infectivity of COVID-19 infected bodies and this fear is spreading throughout the international community. The most worrying thing is some experts giving statements increasing their fear and also spreading non-factual statements as though these bodies are highly infective and should ideally be considered for cremation. They don't say it explicitly, but that's what it implies. Now, the biggest issue of this, some individuals or organizations or certain groups which are waiting there to spread hatred or to suppress the rights of minorities or certain religious group, use these as evidence to push the officials to making laws or processes which stops people able to bury these bodies. We have evident this in Mumbai and also, of course, it's going on in Sri Lanka. So for that reason, I've been asked to put some evidence forward with regards to questioning or challenges these ideas. And that's the purpose of this video. Because I've noticed even some people who are scholars or uh, some minority right fighters, after looking these videos, especially made by some Muslim consultants, have tried to slow down their speed or try to withdraw their efforts to fight for their right in trying to get these bodies for burial. And for me, it's very worrying because they are basing their opinion on the statements made by these, these experts. There is no scientific basis for this. These are hypotheses. This, they think and they assume and they make this a statement. That's the reason why I'm making this video, because at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the links where you can check it yourself and find out the truth about this. Now, before starting that, I'd like to emphasize also another factor that the last days of a loved one is extremely precious for the family. The husband, the wife, the parent, the child, the grandchild, it's extremely precious. It's bad enough that they are very concerned about the virus itself and whether they will get infected or not, but that they can't mourn. They were not allowed to mourn. They were not allowed to have a burial. Has got a far-reaching consequence psychologically, especially for very close relatives. And this is why it's very important this fight is won on the right and fair basis, based on scientific facts. Right. Let's go to the basics. COVID-19, the disease, is caused by the virus called SARS-CoV-2. Now, we all know this is an RNA virus. Now, RNA viruses cannot replicate themselves. They cannot breed themselves. They need to have a live host cell. And what happens is these viruses invade the cells puts its RNA inside the cell and uses the cell's mechanism to produce more RNAs and these new RNAs become encapsulated and buds off these cells, become more and then infects more cells or other individuals. Now this is very different to a bacteria which can replicate itself. It can double up, then quadruple, then become 16, 32. In that way, most of the bacteria that's how they replicate. And for them, they don't have to be inside a cell. They can survive so long as they have nutrition. Now, this is a fundamental difference. The reason I'm saying to you, when somebody has died, they don't breathe, oxygen doesn't reach the, the cells, and the cells die. Once the cell dies, the virus cannot replicate. However, because of the dying process of these cells, whatever the virus inside the cell can come out through the body fluids. And yes, when these cells die and the person died, 
the blood system stops, of course, their own fighter cells, their immunity doesn't work anymore, that will shut down. So there was an argument, because of this immunity shuts down, the virus will replicate. But my question is, how would this virus replicate when the cell has died and there is no host cells? Yes, that's true. Until today, we don't know how long this existing virus will live in these bodies. But I can tell you that these cells are not going to multiply anymore after the cell dies. Maybe about an hour, maybe a few hours, maybe a day. After that, the, the whole system has shut down for this virus and it cannot replicate. Now, the next thing I want to uh, emphasize here is the mode of transmission of this virus. Now, we all know COVID-19, the disease is spread through respiratory droplets. So we cough or we sneeze, you got big droplets, it comes out of your body and falls. And then people touch that area and they get infected because they, they contaminate to their mouth or face or nose. And the other way, which we have found out recently, is that it could come out when you breathe through microparticles. So these are very tiny particles with thousands of viruses and they stay in air for longer than the droplets. And people can walk through that cloud of air, they get infected. These, these two mechanisms comprise 99% of the spread. Only 1% or less than 1% of this virus is spread through feces, urine or blood. However, we talked about when a person dies, when their cell dies, the liquid from the cells and part of the body can leak through the dead person's orifices. So that could be the back passage, the front passage or the mouth. Or when you handle this body, then some respiratory droplets can come out, but there wouldn't be any way more contagious or far traveling than a live person who has got the virus. So in effect, the most important point I'm trying to make here is that even if the dead body has more viruses than the live body, the transmission of this virus will be significantly less from a dead body compared to a person who is infected of COVID-19. So the analogy here is somebody who has got COVID-19 doesn't matter how severe the symptom is, they are much more infective by coughing, by breathing, or by they are being mobile compared to a dead body, they're lying on the table. But as you know, these dead bodies are normally covered. So the infectivity significantly goes down. Now, let's look at what happens to a body when it dies with COVID-19. Now, there's clear guidance from World Health Organization, WHO, as to how these bodies should be handled and disposed of, which clearly gives two options, cremation or burial. But there are conditions to ful ful fulfill. Now, the other countries, namely the UK, so the PHE, Public Health England, and in Europe, the ECDC, and in the US, and in Australia, their own Department of Health have laid down guidelines based on the WHO recommendation. And none of them say it is a must to cremate the body. However, certain countries exercise more precaution than other. We all know that. But talking about the scientific evidences, it is not a must to cremate these bodies. It's absolutely not a must. But let's just go and see what happens to these bodies. So I live in North London. If I talk about a North London hospital, the body will be taken into mortuary. In the mortuary, the body will be put into a body bag. Now these are single layer plastic body bags with a zip seal, okay? These bags are used because of it. These are leak proof bags. That's the only reason. These are not specially coated or expensive bags. So these bodies are put in a body bag and stored in the fridge between two to seven degrees amongst the other bodies which has not been identified as COVID-19. I need to make it very clear. These bodies are stored with the other bodies. So there's no special place we have left these. And then 
But when they handle these bodies, before the body goes into the body bag, people who handle the body will be wearing full personal protective equipment, PPEs, including the FFP3 masks, because of course the body can leak fluid and people can get that. But once the body has gone into the body bag and sealed, and they would write it down as infectious because they need to identify it, they would not have to wear the full PPE. The minimum requirement is gloves, a water resistant apron, and a surgical uh, mask. This is for the handlers of this body after it is being put into the body bag. And then the, there, there wouldn't be any, unless extremely necessary, there wouldn't be no autopsy. And this body will be kept inside the bag. There would be no washing inside the bag. But then the body will be either moved within the body, with the body bag, or would be put into a coffin before it's taken either for cremation or burial. Now, the reason I'm saying that about putting into the coffin is that SARS-CoV-2 virus infection is regarded as category three infectivity hazard. So category one is the, is the mildest, category two is slightly more uh, infectious, category three is where the SARS-CoV-2 falls in, same, uh, all the other SARS infection, all this uh, TB and all those uh, infections fall under category three. Now Ebola and other hemorrhagic viral diseases, uh, because they are bloodborne, very infectious, they actually are in category four. It's only category four bodies have to be sealed in a coffin. In fact, they use a special coffin with zinc coating and they even weld it from outside and then they put some special adhesive to keep it airtight sealed. This is category four, not COVID-19 infected bodies. And these bodies will be then taken to burial and burial usually done by the undertakers but the families can take part in the burial, dependent on which area you are, what kind of arrangement you have with them. But the only requirement is the family has to be trained to use the PPE. So that's the glove, the apron, and possibly the, uh, the surgical mask, but it's not a requirement for the surgical mask once the body is in the sealed bag or in the coffin. Now, the reason I am uh, just bringing this issue is I've seen some videos in, in social media is people are so scared of these bodies and they even use ropes and strings to lower these bodies, people standing two miles away. And the worrying thing is, if you look at from the perspective of the family, they are going through this bereavement and the and the, and the loss they have, and they are seeing their loved one's bodies handled in such a crude manner. And I've seen even one clip where the body, they lose the balance of the body and body falls head down into the grave. How do you think the relatives would deal with this as, as a trauma? So, it's, so all these um, statements given by the uh, professionals who the lay person trusts they take this as a fact and they, their fear gets worse and they worry about it. None of these is necessary. So long as they wear the proper gear, PPEs, they can handle the body, they can lift the body, put it gently onto the grave, do everything what you'd normally do to your father who's died or your son or your wife, and then finish it because this will have a far reaching consequence for them in long term, all this trauma. So I hope I've clarified these steps to establish that the bodies are safe so long as they are inside a body bag. There are some certain countries who take extra precautions. For example, Australia, they recommend double body bagging, but these are just box standard body bags, your double body bag for safety. Now, my humble request to the officials and the people of authorities who have some control over how these bodies are handled I would humbly like to request you to consider the scientific facts, the evidence in front of you, and the WHO guidelines, and give the right to the family of this deceased for their last farewell with their family member within the scope of safety for infectivity, so that 
you can dignify these dead bodies and give them the last movement with their family and most importantly for their mourning for their grievance it is it is extremely important that they have a place of reference for them to be able to mourn and from the religious perspective especially from islamic perspective it's extremely important that these bodies uh, these bodies are buried not cremated so of course you don't when you're in a country i'm fully in agreement with that is the social harmony the understanding between the the different religions and sects and we need to obey the law in a country that's i'm 100% with it but once there is no scientific basis for certain processes the people the government have to give consideration to individuals and the right of the minorities and the religious group so that they can practice this freely this is part of their human rights thank you for your time assalamu alaikum please be safe observe the social distance goodbye